now that we gather all the input variables related to the uh, free cash flows of the project, uh, which is the investment in plant and, plant and equipment in 2021 of Apple. Now, number two input variables of the weighted average cost of capital. The weighted average cost of capital calculation is very important in that uh, that is only factor that discount all, all the free cash flows, the project cash flows, uh, to get the discounted payback period, net present value in terms of rate of return and profitability index. So as we practiced in the class, the first step uh, to get this weighted average cost of capital is to calculate cost of equity and cost of debt. And then we allocate this cost of debt and cost of the equity along with the market value of total uh, financing resources. So how do we get the cost of equity and the cost of debt? First, we need to gather uh, the price information of, in this case, Apple and SM500, the price, uh, the data, the 16 month uh, date uh, to use the cap that model, cap the asset price model. So here, is the step one historical data uh, from Yahoo Finance website or any other uh, data. Then step two historical data, a set of time uh, period at least five years. We'll gather the price information, uh, the frequency of uh, the monthly data. Okay, so let's go to the Yahoo Finance and then here, let's click type Apple please first. Now, Apple stock price information in terms of historical data shows daily basis. But what you want to get is at least five years frequency, the monthly, and apply so that we can get uh, the, all the monthly price information of Apple. And then download on the desktop then opening Apple price information on the date we have all the the, the monthly date uh, for uh, six uh, for 60 a month and then let's copy and paste oh sorry not this place but here the date now the stock price, we use the adjusted closing price. They consider uh, the dividend exit dividend date. Then copy and paste in the price column. We want to calculate the beta, which is the sensitivity of Apple stock uh, to the S and P five hundred the market uh, stock price, right? So we are using the SPY, the ETF fund that represent uh, the S&P 500 market price. So let's type the SPY on the Yahoo Finance and then SPDR, you found this S&P 500 ETF trust fund. And then the same way, historical data. And then we use time period of five years where we gather a uh, monthly price of the market information and download somewhere in your laptop. And then let's copy and paste of adjusted price. You can ignore the other uh, the information because we already collected uh, from Apple cases. And then copy, paste. Now we get all the price, the monthly price information. Then what we want to know is what is the monthly rate? Because the sensitivity uh, between uh, the market and the stock is for the monthly rate of return, right? The monthly rate of return of the market and the monthly rate of return of the Apple, we want to compare between two in terms of the sensitivity, right? Then we calculate the recent one divided by old one minus one. And then we get this 
that double click, then we found right, the monthly rate of return of the market. In the same way, divided by the prior month minus one, so that we get this all the monthly rate, right? Now we are going to use this, the monthly rate of return of the market and the apple into the beta of the equity. So slope function, right? And the slope function, what is the y-axis? Yes, the stock monthly rate of return, right? So we want to collect this monthly stock rate of return. And then x-axis, right? The market rate of return. Then the slope means the sensitivity of the stock. So we found the beta is 1.18. Now, let's fill out the rest of these input variables. Market price per share and number of shares outstanding, market value of equity, market value of the debt, and the total market value of the debt is to calculate the weight of each financing resources. So price per share, we found that the Apple stock yesterday, once again, Apple, then, okay, we found $150, right? So $150 is the stock price. And then number of shares outstanding, we already collected this, right? The balance sheet where we found uh, uh, shares outstanding is 16,426, right? So 16,400. 27 million shares. So the market value of equity is the multiplication of these two. And then market value of debt. Market, where is the market value of debt? Yeah, market value of debt is almost the same as the book value of the debt. There's not much uh, the difference, right? So here we found the total non-current liability here, right? Is the market value of the debt, which is long-term debt. So we link this number uh, to the info variable section. And the total market value of equity and debt is the sum of these two, right? So we found the long-term debt and the equity financing is $2.6 trillion. We could ask that why don't we put this commercial paper or turn debt in the current liability? Yeah, you can definitely add on, but it's not much uh, the influence it, influencing in this uh, the weight average cost of capital uh, the calculation because total market value of equity and debt is significant, right? Now the risk free rate you can research, you can definitely research in the. Uh, website, any kind of website where treasury bill, average rate of return, you found some percentage, you found the other percentages in the, any kind of website that provide the long-term average rate of return for the risk-free rate. So I use some uh, website and then I found the 2.5%, but anyway, once we put this number in hard a number hard a typing, that means that you have to explain all these info variables on the word part where you get it. Then market rate, expected rate of return of the market, S&P 500. You also have to research, right? Research this uh, the S&P 500 average rate of return, and then you get uh, some percentage. Right, and then I found somewhere, some place that shows some percentage, like ten percent or eight percent or nine percent. Okay, doesn't matter, but yeah, you have to explain where do you get it, right? So I found like eight percent of the market rate of S and P five hundred in the historical data. Now we get all this necessary information to get the weighted average cost of capital. The first cost of capital is cost of equity by capital model. What's the capital model? Right, 
the risk free rate plus open the parenthesis the deviation uh, from the base rate of the market which is market risk premium right the market risk premium which is market rate minus the risk free rate then times now we want to calculate the accurate risk premium considering this beta right and so that we get this market risk premium uh, to the accurate risk premium right so we calculated cost of, cost of equity by cap and model of this, uh, the, the Apple Inc. is 8.99%. Cost of debt, yeah, you can calculate cost of debt in YTM calculations or average rate of return of the YTM. The historically, the company has been issued. But here, just the rule, uh, the, as a ballpark, we can get this information here on the 10k the company has been issued the recently has been issued the notes or bond uh, uh, the bond in the long term 3.6 percent is the highest one so i'm going to use this 3.6 percent just simply uh, because that is explaining uh kind of a most conservative are uh, the indicators most uh, the conservative the cost of debt uh, that we can increase with the average cost of capital right so the way the average cost of capital now we calculate cost of debt right cost of debt times one minus now the tax rate we are doing get the tax rate right there you go tax rate which means uh, it is uh, the tax deductible, right? Because the cost of debt produces interest expense that reduces the income before tax, so that we can reduce tax amount. So by this tax rate, we can reduce the cost of debt, right? Now the proportion, the portion of this debt, right? One hundred sixty-two divided by two thousand six hundred twenty-six is the proportion of the market value of debt then plus now the cost of equity right it's not tax deductible right it's not tax deductible why because cost of debt a uh, cost of equity is is kind of dividend is which is after tax the distribution then times the proportion of the equity market value of the equity divided by the market value of total financing right so we got 8.63 is the weighted average cost of capital uh, with which we will calculate all the project valuation and investment criteria of these four measures again the reason why we are using the market value is that we have to assume that the company borrow money from the market at the present time not the historically or uh, original cost of this financing right always you have to look at the perspective of the investors investors lend their money invested their money at the current time right so that's why we are using always the market value of equity and the market value of debt how to calculate market value of equity right just the market price of the share times the number of shares outstanding but the market value of debt is almost the same as almost the same as uh, the book value of debt. We just to use this market value of debt from uh, the, the the balance sheet because the book value of debt is calculated by the present value concept, right? The same as the market value of debt calculation. It's not much deviated. Okay, that's all. And then next video clip we will complete it. Uh, this this capital investment operating cash flows and changes in net changes in net operating working capital finally we come up with this project cash flows and then project valuation and investment criteria okay see you guys bye bye